Yes oh no, not. did I do that? Why well, didn't say I was self-employed? And I'm self-employed? No. Okay, I don't want my intro to be like choppy though. Okay, then you can... I should, I should at least look like I know who I am, How does the way you think about money impact your relationship with it? Today, I thought we could address something that gets overlooked a lot, our mentality. Normally, when people start getting their finances together, they look for solutions like a really nice budgeting spreadsheet or maybe the next best investment. But they forget that the whole story actually begins with us inside of our own minds. And in fact, Many financial experts will agree that shifting our mentality can be one of the most important keys to our success when it comes to personal finance. So how would we do that? How would we actually shift our mentality? Well, if you googled something like rich versus poor mindset, you would see an abundance of articles, threads, and books that talk about this subject. But what we find here is mostly sensationalized, cut and dried differences between how wealthy people think about money versus the rest of the population. But is this really accurate? I myself used to actually read material that would supposedly make me think more like a rich person would. But as I begin to actually build wealth for myself and meet other people who had also built wealth, I began to realize that while there were definitely some nuggets of truth within this material, the mindset is definitely much more nuanced. So I thought that I could maybe help provide value to you by showing you two different mindsets from two different people, Kathy and Kaylee. <laughs> Hello, I'm Kathy. I am a 20-something year old recent graduate living in Toronto. I just graduated from a two-year long professional master's program, which did put me back into debt <laughs> from student loans. Um, I graduated from a master's of arts in child study and education. So I will be a teacher in the near future. I definitely won't be rich. <laughs> you should pay teachers more money. <laughs> I'm Kaylee, I'm 26, I'm from Toronto, and I'm a self-employed commercial photographer. Short, but very sweet. Now, these two people by no means speak for everyone out there. They all have their individual experiences and circumstances. And also, neither of them are financial experts, and they have different levels of experience with money and finance. But I thought that their perspectives compare and contrast nicely. I thought it could provide more of a realistic representation of the differences between how two different types of people would think about money. Kathy speaks from a roughly middle class perspective, and Kaylee will be speaking from a perspective of wealth. I hope that after watching these two people speak, that we can all find something valuable, relatable, and learn something new about money that we may have not known before. So let's kick it off with question number one. What is your outlook on money in general? In general, okay. Yeah. How philosophical are we getting into this? I think money is a socially constructed phenomenon, I suppose, that has been created by the elite of society. I probably should have watched your history on <laughs> money to stratify society so that capitalism continues to propel itself and to work <laughs> but I think money in general is unfortunately something that we have to live or learn to live with learn to manipulate and work with I think it's something that unfortunately is kind of at the foundation of the society in which we live but I think 
as long as it's kind of kept, you know, like at the background of everything and not really ever kind of in the forefront of things. And it should be, I guess, okay. But I feel like that also comes from a place of privilege because I, it's not something that I constantly have to be thinking about and putting on the very top of my, you know, list of priorities. I'm definitely more of an idealist. So in my mind, I think the world probably could be a less corrupt place without money. I have a hard time sort of answering a question like that because I think of money conservatively and liberally. And what I mean by that is that my views are liberal. And so I think that money in ways is a bad thing, but I also um, look at money in a conservative way because I am privileged in the sense that I do make a decent amount of money. And so I want to conserve it and take care of it and make more money. But with that comes also, you know, power and responsibility. And so it makes me sort of feel a little bit imbalanced in how I feel about the world and who I am in my position in the world. But I think money can be a powerful thing, of course, but it's also pretty dangerous and especially where it goes. So that's how I feel about money. Is money complicated or is it simple? I feel like everything in this world is complicated. <laughs> and money being such a big part of how this world functions, it definitely is something that is complicated a big topic I think we complicate money I think it could be simple but again that's easy for me to say because I'm in a position of someone who has money and I look at money as a simple thing because I make it I save it and I spend it where I need to spend it but I think a lot of people don't look at it the same way I think they look at it as this thing that is so powerful and so I don't know just powerful I guess is the right word and yeah I think I think the way I look at it again it comes from a place of privilege so it's not fair for me to say that uh, money isn't powerful to me because it is powerful to me but it's not in, in a way that it's powerful to other people who need it right and I don't know <laughs> I don't know that's a hard question let's get a bit more specific where are you focusing your efforts more saving money or increasing your earning potential I think I'm kind of somewhere in like the middle, if that makes any sense. Like, I mean, obviously saving money is something I'm trying to do. I also am in debt from student loans. So it's kind of hard to be saving money when you owe so much. Um, but I'm definitely, I think, I don't think I'm leaning towards one side more than the other. I think I'm pretty um, comfortable in the middle saving for rainy days and for experiences and trips. <laughs> I should have been doing it this way, <laughs> away from the camera maybe, but also kind of trying to figure out like what the sweet spot is and what I have to be making annually to sustain the lifestyle that I'm trying to live. Oh, definitely both because how can you really have one without the other? I mean, I guess you could save and save and save and then stop working, but for me, um, there's nothing I can save until I make it. So I think the first order of business is making money and keep it in, keep increasing my income and keep making more um, so I can save more. And so that in the long run, hopefully I won't have to work as much because I'll have savings that are already making me money. And um, But yeah, you can't have one without the other. So I think at this point in my life, I'm working hard to make money so that in the future, I'll have more money saved, which will put me in a better position. Which do you find yourself thinking about more often, spending or investing? I think spending definitely happens more often. <laughs> investing, I don't like think too much about it because I don't think I'm kind of, uh, I'm not at that point in my life where I have anything really to invest. I like really rarely think about it because it's just an autom automatic like $50 a month that leaves my account. Um, but I guess spending. <laughs> oh, for sure investing. I think it's like very rare that I think about spending um, because I live pretty fiscally and I don't really consume. I, I try and consume as least amount as possible. Yeah, definitely investing. When you think about wealth, 
What do you picture in your mind? I think I'm a little bit cynical about this, <laughs> but I think like when I, I guess if you throw the word wealth out at me, I kind of um, equate it with the word like excessivity. <laughs> um, so I picture this like unnecessarily lavish lifestyle with like a three car garage and like all these ex like extra cars that you really don't need and extra storage space that you don't need for all the things that you don't need. I guess personally for me, like when I know that I will have uh, reached a certain level of wealth um, that I'm comfortable with, it just kind of means like security and comfort yeah security and comfort not having to worry about the next paycheck and where the money to pay like our bills for a basic level of comfort um will be coming from i think about wealth i i immediately think of like a jerk who flaunts what they have and just has so much that they don't know what else to do with it other than buy things but then I also think about people who have wealth and they share that wealth and they do amazing things for the planet and the world and for people. So I know that there's a lot of wealthy people who, you know, do good things. What do you think about riches and morality? I mean, I feel like I've had this conversation with friends before, like pretty recently too. I don't want to, I always have to check my bias as well. I think if like a person who has status and who has money is like presenting that side of them and trying to put others beneath them, I think they are probably not the best person. Like I would not want to hang out with them on a daily or ever really. But I don't think, I mean, I don't think money necessarily makes a person bad. I think it's, I guess, what people do with the money how it's sourced and how they let it affect them. I think that when I think of a rich person, again, like tying it back to my last answer, like immediately I'll think of someone like Donald Trump who did a lot of to get to where he was and stepped on a lot of people. But I also think about a lot of people who are wealthy because they work their off and don't necessarily step on toes along the way. And I think there's a lot of people like that, especially now that people are able to make money doing things on their own. You know, I think a long time ago when people needed to make huge companies and that's how they made their wealth. This is just growing and growing and growing. Sure, there was a lot of people who were rich, but I think today people are able to make money in a, in a less selfish way, you know, on their own. Is a formal education necessary to have a good chance of creating wealth? Well, as an educator, <laughs> I think education in general is like an extremely potent tool to unlock many doors. I think formal education will definitely help you, granted that you have like a good teacher and good people who are around you to support that growth. I think will definitely give you the more of a critical lens on wealth as a whole concept. I feel like getting into it is a little bit too much, but just as a concept and will hopefully provide you with tools to be able to acquire it to some degree um, for yourself in a way that um, is sustainable, that is not, um, I don't know how to say this. Yeah, that is I, I suppose sustainable. No, and again, that's tying into my last answer is I don't think that people need a higher education, especially today with social media. And I know that's just one example, but there's so many ways for people to make a living for themselves. And it doesn't mean that they need a higher education. Even, even to um, go off of that, I have so many friends who are so incredibly smart, so driven, went to school for 20 degrees, and yet here they are unemployed or struggling. And then I have friends who didn't go to school and they're succeeding in great ways without an education. So I think it's really dependent on um, jobs. And unfortunately, a lot of the jobs that require higher education, there's just so many people with higher educations because people think they need it. And, you know, I, I had an undergraduate degree, like I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts, and to some that's absolutely nothing, right? And I feel like pretty secure in where I am and what I'm doing. So I think that education is just a tool for Definitely specific jobs like doctors and lawyers, but I think that um, skills are a great way to have an education as well. Which is more accurate, 
life happens to you or you create your own life? I think both. <laughs> Definitely am more of an both kind of girl. <laughs> Not either or. Um, I think you're handed certain cards and it's kind of what you do with those cards that determine, I guess, where you may end up. But then there's also all these external factors that you can never see, that you can never predict and see coming. Yeah, definitely both. <laughs> I really believe now I'm in this process of like really thinking about things this way is that you create your life. I've always sort of thought that if you really want something, you can do it. I mean, you can't put your like hand in your mouth or whatever. If you really do want something, it's like 100% possible. You know, I always joke like if I wanted to be a doctor, I could do it. I could, I could do it. I mean, today it would take a long time and it would take a lot of work and I'd probably have to go back to high school. But if I really wanted it, I could do it. And I think that that also comes from a place of privilege because I can afford to do that. And I know that there's a lot of, you know, things like that that prevent people from having an easy way of achieving things, but I really do believe that if someone wants something bad enough, they can do it. When someone tries to give you something, maybe they grab the bill, maybe they do you a favor, how does it make you feel? Oh man, I don't know. I think it depends on who and what. I think generally it is a little bit uncomfortable at first, but when you think about like where it's coming from and who's giving it to you, all of that, why they're giving it to you. You kind of um, learn to receive it with a grateful heart and to appreciate the gesture and maybe even the thing that they're giving you. <laughs> yeah, I think especially also it's like a cultural thing, like in Korean culture at least and customs, like when something someone gives something to you, like you have to accept it Otherwise, it's rude, right? Because it is coming from a good place. It's so funny. I literally was just thinking about that recently too because I have so many generous friends and friends who are not making as much money as I am, who are just incredibly, incredibly generous. And I think that it makes me open my eyes to like my generosity and if I'm that generous because it makes me feel so good when people do things like that for me, even just buying me a coffee or a tea. Like, two dollars but it really goes a long way to show me who that person is and how they sort of value things and i think that when people are generous they're not valuing money they're valuing connection and that's a really beautiful thing because that's what really we have at the end of the day is connection and not money do you want to be rich or richer i want to have enough money for me to not have to worry about it. I want to be happy. <laughs> and if a certain money, amount of money is needed for that dream to be attained, then so be it. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely need some money. <laughs> Not a whole lot of money. I'm, I'm nervous at what money can do to me. <laughs> Not too much money. I am a type of person who needs security in everything. And for me, money is security. So yeah, I would like to have a lot of money because that just makes me feel secure in my life. It will make my children secure. It may even make my children's children secure. And I know that at least I'd be setting up my children for success in what they want to achieve. And so I do think long-term with money. And like I said, it becomes security for me. So there will be a point where I'm gonna say, I think I hopefully have worked hard enough and I would love to retire. And like I said from the beginning, I'm hoping to make a lot of money now so that I can set myself up to be able to stop working eventually. And um, yeah. So there you have it. I hope that this video provided a more realistic take on the rich versus poor mindset. And I hope that you learned something new about money today. Let me know in the comments how you think about money too. Let me know what you agreed with, what you disagreed with, and just your own perspective on the subject. 
A big thank you to Kathy and Kaylee for participating in this video and sharing their great thoughts with all of us. And also, thank you to you for watching this video. If you got any value out of it, please consider subscribing if you're not already, hitting that like button for me, and leaving me a comment down below. I really want to bring financial education to as many people as possible, and I would love for you all to join the community. I hope to see you all again soon.